what device can transport you to another world? This gun in my hand. Falk Ziljan, inimitable hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, knocks on the door of an abandoned building. That's not it. Come on, it's me. Do the knock, please. Use both hands. You're not getting the 16th notes quite right at the start. Try again. Castro, let me in. Why can't you just get a peephole like everybody else? Because killers outside the door see the light inside blocked when you look through the peephole and they shoot you through it. Did you ever think that having confidants stand outside a supposedly abandoned building, knocking secret rhythms over and over for 10 minutes might draw attention to the fact that it's actually the Emerald Ash Borer's hideout? Shh, it's not a hideout. It's the Emerald Ash Borer's gallery. Fine. Can we make this quick? I need to get to the county clerk's office before they close. Yeah, the reason I called is I need a favor. I'm developing a device that allows a person to travel to a parallel dimension. It's another Earth where most of the people and institutions we know exist at the same point in their technological development, but with crucial differences. For now, I'm calling that other dimension the negative space. Great. Given some of my past experiences, I'm being very careful in the testing phase this time. What happened was not my fault. It's never your fault. It's always Ashborer's fault. Except you should know better than to let him in on it. No, it wasn't him. He doesn't know about this. No one on Earth is responsible for what happened. No one on our Earth. Could you tell me what happened and then we'll worry about who to blame? Before I show you, I don't want you to go haywire. Everything's okay. Should I come out now? You may as well. Uh, hi. You're Falco? Castro, what have you done? You used one of those twinning machines to make a duplicate of me? I thought we talked about the ethical considerations. I haven't touched a twinning machine. This man who looks just like you is from the negative space. He says his name is Flinch Zip Jam. I would he say doesn't he looks look just, just like, like me. me. What's your name again? Flinch Zip Jam? That's not my real name. People gave me the nickname Flinch Zip Jam. See, he's got your same initials, and Zip Jam sounds like Ziljan. He's the version of you in that dimension. All right, pleased to meet you. What's the favor, Castro? How much worse is this going to get? In the area of the negative space that corresponds with the Emerald Ash Borer's Gallery, there's a supposedly abandoned building that is actually the hideout for a masked hero named the Six-Spotted Tiger Beetle and his Japanese valet, Keiko. Did you say Kato? No, Keiko. How can I put this in a way you'll understand? Like you're surprised by dessert. Cake? Oh. I thought Keiko was a girl's name. It is. Whoa, is everyone in the negative space gender-swapped versions of us? No, I don't think so. Hey, I'm right here. Anyway, my counterpart, Keiko, made the same kind of device to open a portal into our dimension. However, one of the differences between her and me is that I'm better at keeping my bumbling boss away from the goods. Yeah, her boss is Bricks Ream, crusading young publisher of the underground newspaper, The Daily Centennial. When he wears a mask, he's the six-spotted tiger beetle. He invited me to his burrow to learn crime-fighting techniques. It seemed like an upstanding guy. He was showing off Keiko's Davin Portal device and turned the stupid thing on. I'm glad she didn't call her device the Transportal. We'd have to work out new interdimensional trademark rules. The Davin Portal is really loud. I jumped back from it and bumped into some Erlenmeyer flasks full of transmission fluid, which startled me again, so I jumped forward and... And? He jumped forward into the portal and stepped out here. So now we have to restore order. Is our universe going to blow up because he's made of antimatter or negative matter or something? No, nothing like that. But it would be nice to get him back to the negative space before... <laughs> Sorry. Before he breaks anything else in my lab. Is the portal still open? Can't he just step back through? See, it strikes me as odd that the portal closed as soon as I walked inside it. I'm kind of wondering if the whole thing about Tiger Beetle mentoring me was a ruse to get me in their lab so they could put me through the portal. As a guinea pig? You think they were worried that the positive space would be dangerous? Well, we call your dimension the negative space and ours is the positive space. No, I think they wanted to get rid of me. They've done things to send me out of town and out of the country and leave me stranded. I always make my way back eventually. This time they wanted me out of the universe. Out of their dimension? Yeah. Do crime fighters in your dimension hate competition from other heroes? I bet everything's reversed so your so-called heroes selfishly want all the glory for themselves and they never work together. No, they usually cooperate with each other, but not with me. He's making an honest effort to become a better crime fighter. Hmm. 
Is this one of those things like with time travel where it upsets everything in both dimensions if he isn't returned to his proper place soon? It creates a flux in the time stream or something? No. Nothing coming unraveled in the fabric of space-time? A tear in the fabric? A disturbance in the continuum? No. A wrinkle in time? No. Existential bloop? No. I would like to go back, though. This place is really weird. How so? Uh, no offense, but it's mainly him. Castro? He's a nice guy. Him being a guy is what's weird. I really like Keiko, the version of Castro in my world. Also, from discussions I've had with Mr. Zipjam here, his world is really deeply set in its traditional binary gender norms. He's never heard of NBs or LGBTQIA or ACEs. Yes, I have. We have Ace Drummond, the Red Baron, G8 and his battle aces. Not flying aces. Ace is short for asexual, people who admit they're not interested in sex. What's wrong with them? Can you imagine that kind of attitude holding on as late as 1939? All right, let's get him back where he belongs. What's my part? I think he'll need a chaperone. Otherwise, they'll just push him back into our dimension again. And you'll need to disable or destroy their device. How will I get back here if I destroy it? You're destroying their transportal. I'll open my transportal from here and keep it open. You two step through, you do the deed, and come back. Won't they just repair or rebuild it? If it takes more than 24 hours, I think our dimensions will be out of alignment. The next time they try to open a gateway, they'll connect with some other parallel Earth, not ours. Sorry, it's not a gateway, it's a transportal. I gotta keep on brand or the name won't catch on. So you don't really care if they push me into some other universe tomorrow as long as they don't push me back into yours? That's not it at all. We're talking about dimensions, not the same thing as universes. You're gonna miss out. I have a lot of value to offer. Did you know I have a TV show? What's that? It's a kind of motion picture that's broadcast wirelessly to small devices, so you can watch it at home instead of at the theater. The technology has existed on Earth for a few decades, but only rich people or institutions can afford them. Well, there you go. You wouldn't have a TV show here. Don't you want to go back to the negative space, or whatever you call your place, so you can keep doing your show? Ah, it's not really that big a deal. In fact, it's not on a real TV network. I'm not sure how it's broadcast or how anyone could see it. This one guy I don't even know puts together the whole show. He writes, directs, sets up cameras, acts out all the parts, makes the costumes and sets. It's an action comedy, supposedly. Maybe five or ten people have seen the show. But the guy enjoys making it, and it's not costing me anything. Why spoil it for him? He's been doing it for over a year now. I couldn't do that. Don't you have a relationship with Keiko you'd like to continue? There's your reason to go back. The woman who built a device so she wouldn't have to share a dimension with me. No, I like her. It's not mutual. Is there anyone else special? Falk seems to have a thing for the county clerk. It's not a thing. She's a helpful informant. And sometimes she needs a shoulder to lean on, and she provides a shoulder for me to lean on. I just might have a problem that she'd understand. We all need... But we're not romantic. I don't need that getting in the way of my crime fighting. Anyway, unlike you, Flinch seems amenable to romance. Maybe in his world things have worked out differently. You might not know Petra. She might not even be a lady in his world. Petra Wojohowicz? Yeah, the deed keeper and clerk for the Count. She's secretly a rebel against the fascist political system in our nation. For her masked hero identity, she calls herself Reggie. She dresses in a suit and tie and tries to pass for a man. Wow, your world really is topsy-turvy. Not the cross-dressing thing, I mean the parallels. We have a crime boss named Regina, but her secret identity certainly isn't Petra Wojohowicz. What's her secret identity? I wish I knew. But there is a woman here named Petra Wojohowicz? What's her occupation? She's county clerk and registrar of deeds. It's an elected position. We don't have elections. All officials in P-Town are appointed by higher-level aristocrats. At least we both live in places named Parabellum City and both are nicknamed P-Town. I never heard of Parabellum City till I came here. Our city is officially named P-Town. You. How did people in your world get the drop on you? Don't you have a supernaturally fast quick-draw ability? As long as someone asks a question that you can steer towards mentioning your gun? No, my supernatural thing is I always walk into a place with my gun in hand. Then a lawbreaker will make some cutting remark about how I can't hit the broadside of a barn or my history of failures, and I say my catchphrase and holster my gun. What's your catchphrase? <sighs> or my other catchphrase is someone else saying, two for flinching, and then they hit me twice. So draw your gun again. If you have a gun, that makes you the hero of your story. What kind of gun is it? Heckler and Coke? It's a zip gun. I made it from a copper pipe and some typewriter parts. Maybe you could kind of step back from fighting crime for a bit. Save up for a reliable weapon, do some target shooting, work on your technique, then get back in the game when you're ready. 
Is that what you did? No, I was born ready. Here, Falk, I don't want any bystanders hurt if you try shooting their transport device with your pistol. Take this. I call it the segregation ray. It will pull apart the components of the device without harming any living beings who get in its path. Sort of a disintegration ray, would you say? No, it segregates the components, so you- I'm just going to call it a ray gun. If you're both ready to go, let me turn on the transportal to warm it up. That sounds just like the machine I heard last week, the red herring patrol thing. Trust me, it's different. Okay, I'm going through. You coming? Right behind you. Existential bloop. This gun in my hand is brought to you by The Negative Space. If you've heard it's just a yawning void or the background in a painting or drawing, you're 87% wrong. Modern technologies can open the negative space in a wrinkle-resistant, non-tear fabric of space-time. Hang on a sec, who called in this commercial? No, it's just, what person or agency represents the negative space? I mean, a whole dimension has its own marketing department? Uh, no, I'm just curious, as long as their money's positive. To see what the negative space can do for you, contact your nearest brilliant, marginalized, and underappreciated ballot of the crusading young newspaper publisher who's also a masked crime fighter. We now return to This Gun in My Hand. Falk Ziljan emerges from the transportal, back to his own world in the Emerald Ash Borer's gallery. You okay? It went better than I thought. Turns out Flinch Zipjam is not only bad at fighting crime, he's also bad at assessing people's feelings. Keiko likes him. She was so mad she shot Six Spotted Tiger Beetle when she found out he tried to banish Flinch. Oh no. It was just the gas gun she shot him with, I think. But yeah, Keiko likes Flinch. Maybe she can teach him some crime fighting skills. Or he can work as a support person so she'll be able to focus more on the heroics. I'm glad it was happy endings all around. There was one, I wouldn't call it unhappy, but your transportal doesn't work the same as Keiko's. What's the difference? Hers doesn't have the trans part, if you see what I mean. No, I heard. She calls hers the Davin portal. Let me put it this way. When I stepped into that other dimension, I was missing some parts that are important to me, and I had gained some parts that were bewildering. Your gun was missing? Body parts. I was a woman. Seriously? Oh, yes. What was that like? Uh, good and bad. I didn't take a lot of time to assess how I felt, but I would have to say I prefer this body. The worst part was my voice. You sounded like a man trying to sound like a woman? No, it was so perfect it was eerie. Did the transportal turn Flinch into a woman? No, maybe he was immune to the effect because he came through Keiko's portal the first time around. I don't know. Thanks for your help today. What did you need me for? You could have done all that. First one through before the machine's been tested? No way. Ugh, what a day. Hey, I still got time to get to the county building and see Petra. You two lovebirds deserve some time together. We're not a couple. That's okay. Any which way you work things out, I'm not one to judge. Love is love. We're just friends. Friendship is magic. Acquaintances are not high maintenances. Just promise me you're going to adjust the machine so it doesn't reverse the gender of the next person who goes through. Cross my heart. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> Crossed fingers override crossing my heart, gun boy. Let's see what kind of new experience I'll find in that other world. Hello, negative space. Flinch Zip Jam in the Negative Space, episode 51 of This Gun in My Hand, was dragged out of the hole in his head by Rob Northrup. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. Why can't you just get a peephole like everybody else? because of this gun in my hand.